Hello friends, my name is Steven. Today in this exciting Mission Media Let's Play DaVinci Resolve, we are going to be taking a look at a really fun little project I just got. It is a trailer for a short, I guess short film called Heroes Never Die, which is about some video game named Overwatch that the kids are playing. And it's going to be a real, real nice and easy one. The reference that I got for this is, um, I think it's called Dunkirk, the new Chris Nolan movie. Yeah, Dunkirk. So if you want to see, we're going for this sort of vibe, which is going to be pretty easy. Uh, I'll probably make it a little bit less saturated than this because they specifically said, you know, desaturated. But it's going to be pretty cool. So uh, what I have for the project is the producer came over and gave me a like project managed file. So I've already opened it up to make sure that it works. And we're going to, you know, see what we got. So. This is a great way to get um, a project if you're a colorist. Just give me the, just give them the Premiere file, the use Premiere, and then, you know, you can make your own XML and make sure that everything works, and you'll have all sorts of stuff. This isn't a very complicated thing at all. Oh, another thing, it was shot on the red helium at 6K because they're masochists, so we get to play with that, and it'll be fun, and it'll look nice, and it'll grade really easily. So this is gonna be a nice, quick little ditty, hopefully. And just let Premiere open all the way. Come on, big guy. There we go. All right, so there's all these other things I didn't get, which is fine because I don't need them offline all. And then, yep, if we're lucky, we get the whole project here. So let's see, loading up some thumbnail. I'm going to go ahead and delete this music because we won't need that in our XML. Control X, get rid of these in and out points. So our silly. All right. Well, we're not seeing anything on the viewer. Don't know why that is. But, oh, there we go. Look at that. So you can see it looks good. It's playing back. Well, it was playing back nice until we started changing shots around a bunch, but that's fine. So you can see this, you know, it looks like it hasn't been graded yet, which is great. All right, so now we're going to go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML, sweet. Going to move this into Active Projects, uh, <laughs> Heroes, A, B, C, D, F, H, I, J, K, L, Q, gosh darn it, where's Heroes, there we go, Heroes Never Die. Now, I'll call this XML. So we've got the project name, the like asset name, and then what it is, which is a nice little way of naming things that I stick to pretty religiously. So now I've got that. I'm going to leave Premiere open for this. I'll minimize that, and then we'll open up Resolve. I'm just leaving Premiere open in case there's any sort of issues that we need to fix. Then we don't have to open it back up again. But when we get in Resolve and if everything works out the first time, which is always awesome when that happens occasionally, then we can close out Premiere and we can get to grading. All right. Don't know what that was. So Control Shift I. And good thing I left this open. Now we can just go ahead and copy our path there. Pretty sure there's a way to do that on the Macintosh, but it's just more effort. So all of this looks good. Use sizing information. Cool. Okie dokes. It's imported. Three clips we not found. That's fine. That's probably title stuff. No. Close. Yeah. Lupin productions don't need. And title and title don't need. It. Okay, so now you can see this looks wrong. So this was also shot with anamorphic lenses because, you know, apparently they can do that. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our project settings here, master project settings, change this to CinemaScope, and that will get us halfway there. Well, 
partway. Then we'll go to media and we'll select all of our anamorphic media, right click, go to clip attributes, then change pixel aspect ratio to cinemascope. Okie dokes. Now look at that. Okay, now it looks good. That's the way it's supposed to look. All right. So, oh, really? We have this few clips? Awesome. This is going to be super easy. Um, we'll start with, I guess this will be a good shot. Oh, man. See, do we get any playback? Get pretty stuttery playback. That's fine. Okay. We won't start with that shot. That shot is pretty dynamic. So this shot, I bet, yeah. And we're grading these all the same, so it'll be pretty easy. So we want it to look, you know, desaturated and the cliche sort of cinematic type vibe, action movie, whatever. So this is not a good place to start from. Oh, the first thing we're going to do, go to our camera raw settings, change this to red. Uh, this actually won't help us out very much, but I'm already here. So change this to project. Uh, change this to red log. It's base is fine. Okay, save. Cool. But then we're going to still change this again. So that was a totally useless endeavor. So red log is good. Uh, let's see what dragon color four looks like. Don't really see much of a difference. I'll just keep it there. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we see this shot is like crazy orange. So I'll bring some scopes over here because scopes will be halfway interesting. So let's just go ahead and... Ooh. Okay, still recording. So yeah, these will just go here for now. That looks good. And all right, so the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to change our color temperature. If you haven't worked with raw footage before, this is one of the reasons why you do it. So 1700 G's, but I mean, that does look pretty correct. Tint minus 20. Is that the correct direction? Yeah, it's about right. Um, do I want it to... It's a little too much. So I'm just sort of getting our vector scope centered out here. And that's looking much better already. Then I think I'm going to keep that there and then do our contrast adjustments in this guy. So increase some contrast. Ooh, too much. Then pivot. And then we can see these guys are doing sort of funny things. So I'm not going to do my contrast there. I'm going to do it with curves because this is, oh, yeah, and this is too blue. Let's change our color temp to like 2200. That's not enough. 2000. Okay, that looks okay. We'll just correct that a little bit later. And now we will go ahead and scoot our Luma curve inside make sure just the luma curve is selected for this and bring that in we want it to be semi-dark we're probably not going to be clipping but we're definitely going to have it yeah there are little bits of it that are just sort of kissing down there which is good now we don't need super bright highlights on this normally you'll see somebody get this and say oh we're gonna make this all the way bright and they'll do this number and you'll see that looks very bad we don't want that because this is supposed to be dark because it's, it's a dark thing so we will just add some little bit of contrast yeah that's looking pretty good so now sort of just basic 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 this is basically what they're basic 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 this is you know much closer to what they were wanting for this shot but you can see there's some pretty big issues compositionally. We see the really bright part of the gun here in hand, and we don't see the face. And sort of, I normally want to see people's face unless there's something that's really obvious that it should be, you know, a different thing as a focus, which in this shot, the face should be the focus, not the gun. Guns are boring. Okay, so what we're gonna do to do that, I'm gonna move the scopes to the side because we're gonna start doing some actual stuff. 
You see, I'm being a little more conservative than I am normally with the nodes just because these are big files and you want to be a little bit more conscientious of your node structure whenever you're dealing with, you know, big memory intensive files because, you know, performance actually matters now. All right, so I'm going to try and do a bit of a key on the face and see what I can get. I don't think I'm going to get anything that I'm liking. I got to first go to the key tab. Not that one, you goof, this one. Huh. That's sort of better than I was thinking. So, black clip. Nope. White clip. You just not updating? That's fine. Yeah, that's not doing what I want anyway. Yeah, we're going to make this simpler. We're just going to do a little qualifier here. Do this guy. Let's brighten up here. And I'm just going to remove some of the dark parts of this shot so we don't touch those too much. So eat those just luminance and we're just twirling this around yeah so I just want to make sure that we cool just like that then we will go ahead and I'll blur it just a little bit to make people happy and then I'll invert it now we're just getting these parts affected. So that should be a little bit better. So now we'll go back to our curves. Brightening it up just a little bit. I don't want to go too hard with it. Even that might be a bit much. So instead of using curve, let's just go to our contrast control and change the pivot so it brightens us up. And that's looking a little better. What happens if we just remove this key? I think it might not be doing what we want. Uh, let's just reset it. Yeah, that was doing nothing for us. Nothing that we needed, at least anyway. Bump the gamut just a bit. No, that is way too much. That's too much. All right. Cool. So let's look in neat. Uh, before we forget, we'll go ahead and track this. I'm going to disable all the nodes. So it goes faster, disable 3D, because that is 90% of the time not something you need. It's tracking forward, nice and slow. It's not real accurate, but that's fine. We just sort of need it to move a bit. Track backwards. Boy, it does not like going backwards, does it? We'll remember that for the next shots. Cool, but now that's done tracking. So we will re-enable our nodes with Control D, not Control D, Alt D. All right, so this is looking like pretty okay. I'm gonna go Shift S before this. I wanna actually get a bit of a grade going on. I sort of jumped into these secondaries a bit early. So in here, I'm gonna just do our standard sort of orange teal stuff, so mid-tones. Pull down, low range down. It's nice you were getting a bit of that Dunkirk look that he was wanting. Don't want to see this. Cool. High range down even more. Yeah, that's starting to look good. 
And then in the parallel node, we will do midtones orange a bit, high range up, low range up, down. Let's make these go crazy so we can see what we're doing. I did it in parallel. The scopes are moving, but my image isn't adjusting. That one is, maybe that. Okay, so it was that control. All right, so there's about that. That's too much, but that's the right place. All right, cool. Now that's looking pretty cinema-y. And since these are in parallel, I can just go ahead and do another adjustment right in here without adding another node. So yeah, saturation down a bit. Okay, cool. So now we've got this guy, another parallel node. I want to see if I can get away with. Brightening up her eyes some. Because right now they're pretty shadowy. So we'll go ahead and soften these guys way out. We're just going to do a rough selection to see what happens first. Because I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get this in this shot. Hmm. I might be okay with that. Oh, geez, the detail. Alt-Shift-Z. No, shut up. Gosh darn it, NVIDIA. That's pretty cool. All right, so yeah, we were at the front. Then we'll go ahead and track this forward. Alt-D, then... Probably don't need zoom either. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Let's reset this and just keyframe it. It's a pretty simple move. So this is corrector seven. Just going to, no, I shouldn't do that. That's lazy to, I guess it's linear window. Yeah, I would have thought that would have been the gradient one, but oh well. So there's that, and I'll go to the middle. Make sure we're still halfway there. Cool, so now that we are looking halfway okay, potentially, let's clean this up a bit. And hit Alt to bring this back cool we were doing it in our curves wink it's a little too much but I kind of like it also all right then one more parallel node and vignette Invert. Actually, I should not do that there. I should do that before everything. Because of how the grade works. Dunkirk is a fun thing to say. All right, so invert and bring the gamma down
Don't really like what that's doing. So we won't do it with the gamma. We'll do it with our curves again. Take that part down. Keep that part the way it is. This way we don't get those gross clippy blacks just on the outside. We make it look a little more like it's supposed to be like it is. All right, and that's still sort of, I wish it would pop a little better. Be take some saturation out of this. That's another thing we can do is we can go in here, go to our luminance versus saturation. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm okay with that. So we'll go ahead and save. And now that we've got sort of some stuff figured out, let's go ahead and name this one. Gosh darn it. Re label node. Okay, and these are sort of our orange teal section, and then these are our secondaries, and then this is our vignette. So we'll go ahead and change label. Vin, because I probably can't spell vignette. Let's go ahead and move this up so I can see what we're doing. Oh, look at that. Perfect. 20, 20 something minutes. All right, so this is part one of the tutorial. We've got one shot graded, should be pretty quick from here. We got the project imported, everything's looking good. We're ready to rock and roll. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Mr. Media YouTube channel. If you want even more goodness, check out mistermedia.com slash products. We have all sorts of good stuff. Lutz, power grade, stock footage, amazing, amazing, cool stuff. So, uh, Check out the next part of this, which I'm recording, you know, right after I hit stop here. And once again, I'm Theo with Mission Media. Whoa, once again, I've been Theo with Mission Media. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.